Hey, Leslie. Um, hey, John. Mike and Jordan, they've been good, very good, the entire time they've been here. Uh, it appears, and statistics kind of back it up, that they've even taken it a step further. What have you seen from that duo in the back end uh, this season that, that maybe has them playing at a, a completely different level? Uh, yeah, I agree with you, John. I think they are playing at a, at a higher level than they have in years past, and they've been really good for us uh, throughout their careers here in, in Buffalo. Um, I think probably the, the time on task, the time they've been together, uh, you've seen the results of that, the fact that they've been in the same system now for you know, going on five seasons, and the confidence level is extremely high. Uh, they almost can anticipate what the other's going to do you know, prior to it happening, and that kind of symmetry between the two of them has really made a difference in, in their production and their leadership has gone to another level as well. I mean, it, the way they organize things in practice, the way they communicate with their teammates has been really, really good. But I just think the, the time that they've been together is probably it as much as anything, because they've always been talented, but to have the, the amount of experience that they have in the same system, uh, you know, things just come a look, kind of easy for them, uh, it seems. So that's probably the, 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 the big thing that I see. I know the entire defense, all three levels kind of work in unison and things like that. But do this at a safety position, how much are the plays made by one because of the unity they have with the other? Do you get what I'm saying? Like what Jordan, when Jordan makes the interception, how much of that is attributed to his connection with Micah and, and vice versa? I think a lot of it uh, is attributed to the opposite safety. When both guys are on the same page, when it comes to the skies, when it comes to the look that they're trying to give the quarterback, sometimes you're setting up the other safety to make plays just because of the look that you're giving the quarterback. For for example, the play that Jordan got the interception on in the, in the game yesterday, we were showing one coverage where it looked like Micah may end up playing a, a certain position. Then once the ball was snapped, Jordan actually ended up playing a position that Micah made the quarterback think he was going to be playing. So the fact that they were able to play off of each other and really give the, the, the quarterback false looks, uh, yeah, I think it really helps the both of them because of that. And that goes back once again to the amount of time they played together. Uh, sometimes it's just a nod and a wink, and they both are on the same page as to what look we want to give a quarterback. And you said they're doing that – more so now, or was it something they were doing a year ago, or, or is it just better now, I guess? I think they've been really good at, at giving quarterbacks different looks over the years. It's just, I mean, they're just more comfortable doing it, and uh, they've done it enough now to where they can play with things on their own. Uh, Bobby Babbage, our, who works with our safeties, has done a great job in helping them to understand you know, when they can show certain things and when they can't within the system. And they've taken advantage of it because of their experience. So um, I, I, I think it's just a, a something they've done, but they've just taken it to another level because of their experience. Thanks, Leslie. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie, Josh Reed here. I uh, hope you're having yes. a good day. Yes. The, the um, Let me stick with the secondary here while we're at it. The um, Is it possible that we just don't talk about your Davies weight enough? I mean, it's just, I, I, and I don't know if it's one of those, I was thinking about it today, I don't know. Is it one of those deals where quarterbacks tend not to go his way, so therefore you, we just, he doesn't show up a ton on tape because quarterbacks aren't going to challenge him. Is that what it comes down to? And what have you seen from him this season? I think that's, that's it, what you just mentioned, Josh, a fact that he doesn't get a lot of opportunities because quarterbacks don't really mess with him that much. Although yesterday they gave him some opportunities and he came up big time and time again. And, uh, but it doesn't happen very often that they challenge him. So, uh, you know, he, we, we don't take him for granted. I tell you that uh, on defense, we know his importance and there are a number of times where we end up having him to have to shadow a certain receiver or to line up where we think they're going to throw the ball the most. And he continuously comes up big for us. Uh, but I think probably what you said earlier, the fact that he doesn't get that many opportunities, so we sometimes forget about him. But the reason he's not getting that many opportunities is because people respect him so much that they don't throw at him very often. That's all I got. Thank you so much, Leslie. Appreciate your time. You're welcome.
Hey, Leslie. Um, Sean said Ed Oliver has been playing the position in a complete way, more so the last few weeks. I guess what does that entail at, at defensive tackle, and what have you seen from him? Yeah, Ed has really uh, stepped it up uh, this season. I think having a, an offseason, having a training camp has helped him a great deal. Matter of fact, he was uh, our game ball recipient on defense uh, yesterday because of his play. Very active. Uh, you know, he's be become a guy who's become a student of the game, which is something we were challenging, challenging Ed with during the offseason. He's such a gifted athlete. We wanted him to get to the point where he was becoming more of a thinking man's player and being able to anticipate things by, per by personnel on the field, by down and distance, uh, looking at a guy's stance and getting out, having, having a, an idea of what may be happening before the play actually begins. And uh, he's really grown in that area with his film study. Uh, and really having a better understanding of what our defense is asking him to do within a, a certain call. So uh, that growth alone, I think, has helped him to become a better player, more all-around player. And we're the beneficiaries of that at this point. He said he's playing, uh, he feels more loose out there. Uh, one, do you see that? And two, is that preparation you just talked about, is that how a player can feel loose by, by having that, I guess? Yeah, you know, he's, he's always been a, a confident player. Uh, Ed has never been one to be shy about telling you he's capable of doing it. But now, because of the preparation, he's able to be more well-rounded as a player. He's not just a guy who can rush with power or just a guy who can play one block. Uh, he's doing multiple things well for us, and that goes back to his becoming a student of the game, which is part of the maturation process uh, to get to the point where he is now, not in his first year anymore, not in his second year anymore, uh, but really coming into his own at this point in his career. Thanks, Leslie. Well. Hey, Leslie, Sal here. Good to talk to yes, you. Always, yes. I'm always asking you questions about the game and evolving and things like that. So I got another one for you today. Um, okay. You played the entire game in nickel defense. Uh, could you have envisioned years ago when it was like, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago, that happening in the uh, NFL? Uh, probably not. I mean, you're right. The game has evolved so much. It's become like, like we all know, a passing league now, uh, you know, anymore teams are one dimensional from the start. There was a time where you had to make them one dimensional. You had to take away the run game, forcing the throw. But now, man, there are some teams you go into it knowing that you, you got to defend the pass and, and, and you may get a run here or there just to try to keep you honest. But so the game has changed a lot. And because of that, defenses have changed. And, uh, you know, you're trying to get your best personnel on the field for matchup purposes, because, Everything in our league now has become about matchups. So, uh, and that means getting more skill on the field to match up with offensive skill. And so, yeah, it's evolved a great deal. But to answer your question, no, 20 years ago, I would not have thought we'd be where we are now. I mean, you got to have the people to do it too, right? I mean, most teams can't just play straight nickel the whole game. I mean, you might have guys, you might have guys and players and volume and, you know, but you got to have the right guys to be able to really be able to do that, right? No doubt. And uh, we're fortunate in, in Taron uh, Johnson to have a guy like him at the nickel spot who's really, in essence, say, uh, he's a star uh, mm -hmm. because of how much he plays. And we've been doing this now with him for the last couple of seasons, probably maybe midway of last season. We really kind of got to this point where we have become more of a nickel team. Mm -hmm. And there are some teams where we'll have to get some base on the field, get three linebackers on the field, but it's rare in today's league. And the fact that Taron I mean, he allows us to keep nickel on the field, even when people have two backs on the field. He's, he's a good run defender. He's good in coverage. He's a really smart player. So we never feel like we're handcuffed uh, based on the personnel that the offense has on the field because of his ability to help us to match up. Thanks, Coach. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie, it's Kim Jones. How are you? Hey, Kim, doing good. Good. I had um, Josh Reed's Tredavious question, so you answered that perfectly, so I appreciate your answer there. Um, I wanted to ask about your DBs as a whole, because one of my favorite parts of training camp, not just your training camp, but training camp, is coming to Orchard Park and seeing your DBs with the jugs gun before they really get into practice. I don't see that everywhere, which doesn't mean it doesn't happen everywhere. But Micah was telling me the other day that you guys do a lot of ball drills. Yeah. Is all of that by design because of some of the things you were just talking about, about the evolution of the game? And do you think the Bills maybe put a higher priority on, say, the safeties with the jugs gun? 
Um, I don't know if we put a higher priority on it, priority on it, Kim, than other teams. I just, okay. you know, around the league, I don't know that, but I know here in Buffalo, we put a high, it, it is a high priority for us. Okay. I'm sure. Uh, we're, we're doing drills pre-practice. We're doing drills post-practice. Yep. And it's more so because we know that takeaways win games. So if we can finish plus in a take in a turnover differential, we know that's a that's a that's a, a strong possibility we're gonna win that game yep. if we can finish plus two, plus three, plus one. The percentages go way up when we can finish in the in the, in the plus uh, when it comes to the turnover differential. So for that reason, it's a heavy emphasis. And my old coach Mike Dicker used to say, you achieve what you emphasize. So we emphasize it, and uh, yeah, Kevin Kearns is sitting next to me. Uh, I, I think it was Mark uh, mentioned to me the other day, since 2017, nobody has taken the ball away in the NFL more than the Buffalo Bills defense has. And right. it's something that we place you know, high, as a high priority, and our guys know that, and uh, we practice it. And we talk about it all the time, but it's one thing to talk about it. You know, you got to emphasize, you got to practice it, and, and they're getting it done. And just as a really quick follow up, I think against Washington, both Jordan and Micah had interceptions. When they have that, I know they're mature guys, but when they have that kind of positive reinforcement, I'm guess coaching them up on all of this stuff becomes that much more seamless because they're getting results on game day. Oh yeah, I mean they they they're they're requesting the ball drills <laughs> when they're getting this kind of success that they're having right now, uh, <laughs> which, which is good. And uh, you know, John Butler, uh, our secondary coach, along with Bobby Babbage, they do a great job in taking those guys through the paces and giving them those ball drills. Uh, as I mentioned before, practice and, and even during practice, off to the side yeah. at times when our offense is going, they're over there catching balls. You know, live balls at times and then jugs as well. And uh, so when they get into a game, it's not a surprise. Like the one Jordan had yesterday yep. off a live arm, I mean, to be able to catch it with my hands and watch it, watch it all the way in with my eyes. So, uh, but you got to work on that. You got to work on it. You got to have players that are willing to do it. And as you mentioned, because we're getting positive results, so yep. they make sure that the coaches uh, take them through it because they want those, those interceptions. I could ask you seven more questions, Leslie, but I know I can't. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hi, Leslie. I uh, just want to keep going on this continuity part. You know, it's it's not just the uh, the safeties. It's your corners have been together for a while. And even your D-line, I mean, you know, they they play a rotation, but we've got a lot of veterans there. Um, you, you know, how much of a luxury – can you just kind of describe what, what, what it's like as a coordinator to have that kind of luxury and, you know, to be able to – you could probably throw a lot of things, as you already said – at these guys and they can just take it and, and it makes your job, uh, I'm guessing a little bit easier. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's a true luxury in every sense of the word, you know, when you come into an off season and you know, a lot of things that you're going to be saying, the players could actually finish your sentences for you. Uh, that, I mean, that's, that makes your job a whole lot easier for sure. And we're at that point because of all the guys that we have that are returning. And, and then the reason they're returning is because they're talented football players and they're smart players. And so that makes my job, along with our assistant coaches jobs, a lot easier. And we can you know, come up with tweaks in the game plan that if we were maybe in year one or year two, we might take pause and say, well, I don't know if they'll be able to get this. Well, with the group that we have, because we've been together for so long, you know, we can change our game plan in midstream. We had a deal yesterday in, in the game where there was a, a call that wasn't in the game plan. But it's something we've done in the past. Uh, we did it in training camp. We did it early in the season. And, you know, I, I called it. Uh, the guys executed it. Uh, and I had no doubt in my mind uh, that they would be able to execute it uh, in a live game situation without us having a lot of reps on it. And that speaks to your point about the continuity and the confidence that it gives me, but also uh, the confidence that it gives our players. They know the system and they could teach the system. Uh, I know our safety's good and our, our, our Corners could as well. Uh, Levi, Dr. Davis, these guys have been in the system for a while now. So it's 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 a we're, we're very fortunate to have it the way we have it. 